Welcome to today's 3D print new unboxing build and first print. You know what this is? A lot of you have been asking for this. Any cubic i3 mega. Stay tuned while we take this thing apart. Here's the inside of the box. A full kilogram, it looks like, of plastic. It's black, but hey, it's, it's a full kilogram of plastic. You know, that's like 20 bucks right there. That's pretty cool. Um, power cord, goodie bag, looks like an E3D knockoff, and a substantial instruction manual. It actually appears to go into a lot of detail. That's pretty cool, including leveling your bed and print quality with some excellent diagrams. That's nice. So we'll go over more of that later. I'm going to pull all this out of here now. This is a roll of filament. This is your gantry. This is your base. This is your goodie bag. Scraper. Looks like it is sharpened. Nice. Big one too. Acrylic spool holder. And power cord. Nippers. USB cable. Different little minutia, nods and ends. I do like the fact that the hot end is plug and play. So you can actually unplug it and remove it without having a a wire, a single piece wire going all the way back to the, the printer. I like that, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna tear more of this apart. Contents of the goodie box. It actually comes with a complete spare hot end. Looks like a E3D clone, because there is also one inside the printer already assembled, so this is a spare. Full-size male A USB cable, parts to build your standalone spool holder, spare limit switch, spare screws, these look like the screws to hold the gantry to the printer. Similar construction to the Wanha Duplicator i3, um, the plus where everything's built into the base. Color-coded plug, so assembly should be pretty straightforward. Some gloves, some really nice pair of metal, very fine tip tweezers. If you get poked with these, that's going to hurt. Wrenches, Allen keys, US power cord, snips. Takes a full-size SD card, comes with a micro SD card, completely unbranded, unnamed, untagged. It's just a blank card with a serial number on the back. There's nothing on there. I don't even know how big it is. And it comes with the SD adapter so it could fit in the printer. And the little memory card reader takes both micro SD and full size SD. That's pretty cool. And a very nice spatula. I like the spatula. That's cool. It's big, it's sharpened, it's wide. Very cool. And a very in depth manual. I'm going to go through the manual, see if there's any gotchas. And I'll let you guys know if there is any gotchas. This is the entire gantry with Z axis. It uses smooth rails, just like the Duplicator i3 Plus does. And it has this, their own custom. The glass is already attached, something called Ultra Base. It's supposed to be crazy durable. I think it's PEI based or something like that. So we'll see. It's like a, I don't know, it's like a, a pattern. You can feel a texture. It's texturized. So I believe that's to allow better grip and also give you a place to get underneath there to pop your prints off. So apparently this gets a lot of rave reviews from people who like this so we shall see well it turns out that those spare parts were actually the set of four nuts and bolts to build your spool holder so you just take your spool mount it as such and there's the spool holder for the printer we're going to use paramount's british racing green because i don't like black black's boring and now i'm going to try something new this camera has a time lapse capability so i'm going to set up a time lapse as I build this printer and we'll see how well that comes out. Install the gantry by sliding the base into the bottom then you put the eight screws in. They are finicky so be careful. Don't tighten them all. Just snug them and then tighten them after you have all eight in. And at this point you plug in the wires color coded and then I went around and I checked every single nut on the machine to make sure it was tight and time for power up. Went through a preheat got the filament set up, fed it through the filament cutout switch, and then we can get going. Printer is assembled. That process was quite easy for the most part. These screws, the four on each side, are a little hard to line up. Um, you have to kind of play with the gantry to get the hole to line up because it does not thread in unless it lines up and you do not want to strip them because those are primaries. Um, I went around, tightened up all the bolts with the wrenches. Uh, for the most part, QC was pretty good. Most of them were tight. These four and these two, um, some of them could use a little bit of tightening. Um, two of them up here could use a little tightening. Not a lot. They weren't loose, but they weren't as tight as I like them. Color-coded plugs, plugged directly in. One for the filament sensor, one for the 
hot end and base and whatnot. It's all plug and play. You see these little plugs everywhere. Everything all, all plugs in. The tube here was stored underneath. You want to pull that out so it sits up like this. Otherwise, you get some nasty binding in your Bowden tube, which gave me a hard time feeding filament. No big deal. Uh, something interesting. They got around the problem of leveling the X gantry. There are two limit switches. There's a limit switch here and a limit switch here. And you have an end stop adjustment on each of these for the limit switch. So it levels the X gantry every time the print resets and it does its auto level in the beginning because there's a limit switch on both sides. So each one will come down until they hit those limit switches. So once you tune your X level, if you need to at all, it should stay. You should never have to worry about your gantry drifting. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's all heated up, ready to go. I'm now going to level the bed, and I think I'll do another time lapse for that. Since you can watch any of my videos, it's a standard four screw bed level process. Here I'm using the controls to move it around after I auto homed, and then I adjust each knob through each position. Alrighty, I have leveled the print bed. Um, it does not appear to have a guided level setup like the um, more modern printers do, but it does on the touch screen I can move by 10 millimeters of pop, so I just moved it to the four corners and did my bed level, came back to the first corner, tweaked it, and now I am printing the file that it comes with. It's a pair of owls, or owlpair.decode, and it's now heating up. The screen here is actually pretty cool. It tells you the file, it's printing time, your hot end temperature, bed temperature, your progress percentage, and your print rate, and I'm guessing XYZ position. Now this does appear to have power off or zoom, but you have to make sure that your print does not occupy the front quarter of the print bed, basically where this block would have to be since it rehomes when you do that. Um, so you have to make sure your print sits toward the back of the print bed, according to the instructions. And um, you have to add G-code, start G-code to whatever slicer you use. All you have to do is add a G5. For whatever reason, you add a G5 that tells it you're enabling power off or zoom, and then if power gets interrupted, you can press resume on the screen to the print, and it'll begin printing again. So we're going to actually test that. I see it lifts up, and then comes down to the center. Here comes the filament. Looks like the bed level was successful on first try. It doesn't appear to be printing oddly. Actually, it looks quite good. This is the G-code that came with the printer, so I have not sliced this. This is what they sent with it. So I'm printing it as is. That's it. I am going to stop the recording right now and start up again when it's done printing this and I'll show you what it is. I may attempt a power off resume during the middle of this print just to see what happens. Let's try interrupting it and see what happens. Oops! The head does not move out of the way. It stays on the print. That is bad. Let's see if there's a resume. Print, owl, resume. I do not like that it did not move the head. So the head sits there and melts away part of the model. That's not good. But it did appear to resume. We'll see what it does. I'm going to pause you while it heats up again. Alright, it is rehoming. And it looks like it is resuming. Let's see if it hits the model. Well, we got it. But, when the power went out, it did not move the head. So that hot head sat there and melted a part of the model, which is going to absolutely cause a defect in the model. But, it is resuming. That's pretty cool. Alrighty, it's done to print. It took one hour and eight minutes. And something amazing happened. If this is repeatable, I really, really want some of this stuff, <laughs> okay? I just touched it, and it came off. So I want to see if it does the same thing with the other one. 
<laughs> That's amazing. It basically came off on its own. I just, I, I literally, I touched it, was wondering, okay, how much force can I put on it? And the moment my finger touched it, that one came off. And this one here, you saw, I just touched it. <laughs> wow. I got a good squish because the layer is solid and I can see the pattern of this ultra base. That's incredible. Wow. That means a power off or zoom is useless. Because if this thing is permitted to fully cool down, the print's just going to move. <laughs> Unless it resticks again when it heats up. Look at this. It just it just comes right off. That's really quite remarkable. Interesting. This belt feels too loose. I tightened it up a little bit. I still think it's a little too loose. I need a longer belt. But the print is not bad. Not bad at all. You can see the mark from where it did the power off or zoom. I don't know how well you can see that in the video. Um, but the print's not bad, even with the seemingly loose belt. So I am now going to print my test suite on it, which will take three and a half hours. And I'll make a separate synopsis video of that. Um, you will know, of course, this by now, but I'm going to try two different ways of doing this. I'm going to make a short 10 minute video, just going over the printer real quick. And then I'm also going to do my normal stop and go build video, which is what you're watching now. And I'll just do them both. So people who want the longer video can get that. And the YouTube algorithm, which likes the shorter, more concise video, and the people who don't want to watch a 20 or 30 minute video, they can watch that one. So best of both worlds. Uh, my initial impressions are impressive. It seems pretty nice. I mean, it seems like a pretty significant improvement on the standard one health duplicator i3 type structure printer. This does feel pretty solid. I see no wiggle at all in this frame. That's good. Um, the one how duplicators require Z bracing. This does not. I do not have any need or desire to put Z bracing on this. This feels plenty stiff enough. And it's cool. We'll see. <laughs>